And welcome back. Well, sort of. Let's treat this as an interim video whilst I still recover from my IOP. But first, let's have a quick message from our sponsor. PCB Way, PCB prototyping the easy way. New users get their first order absolutely free. PCB assembly for up to 10 pieces costs just $88. Check out their website now. And uh, you won't be seeing much of me in this video. Normally you see me in a little mini window, but uh, as I'm still recovering, here I am with my Pirates patch. Um, it's, it's not the greatest look, and as you can see, I haven't got the, uh, the green screen behind me either. So it's, um, it's not the best of looks, but uh, I'll take myself off and we'll still talk about what's going on on my bench. Because this is just one of those little tiny projects that I tried to do whilst I was covering bef recovering before I you know, really went to town on any more um, electronics type projects. This is more um, an electrical one, really. So let's think about exactly what this is all about. And it's something that um, I've been meaning to do for a while. Now, some of you may recognize this. This is um, a Mr. Beam's battery powered PIR light. Um, this bit this bit here, when it doesn't try to escape, um, screws in or plugs in to um, a receptacle that's actually at uh, the top of my door outside my workshop. There it is, there's a picture. Well, the receptacle, anyway. And um, I got this from Amazon and uh, it seemed to work okay except of course during the hours of darkness um, it only works and in the winter I say well say from October through to March um, it comes on quite a bit you know there's a lot of movement it used to be outside our front door actually so there was probably a bit more movement me coming to and from work and stuff and um, basically it it started to eat the batteries because it doesn't take um, one of these, this is a D size cell, it doesn't take two of them, no it takes three D size cells. Now these cells are pretty chunky and it can deliver a fair bit of current and for a while I was, I was reasonably happy with the performance of this because it can be quite bright. However, as it's been outside my workshop since April 2018, it was okay during the summer months but now it's winter it really is sucking those batteries dry far too quickly so what's the solution well the obvious thing is to make it mains powered or at least low voltage powered because I was fed up replacing those rather expensive batteries so the first thing to do is think how much current does this take then because it also comes with a nice little remote control here it is so this is a remote control. You can either turn it on or off manually. Or well, this thing here means turn on the PIR and it flashes three times when it's on. And if you do it again, it will flash twice as I've turned it off. And you can brighten and dim the actual overall light, which it remembers. Great. I mean, it's, it's quite a nice little unit. I think the actual cost of it today is around 15 quid, which in the scheme of things isn't that bad at all. But as I say, the battery eating was just getting on my nerves a bit too expensive now that I'm sort of semi-retired. So the first thing I had to do then was plug this into my power supply to see how much power that single LED was going to take. So let's have a look what that says. Now the first thing to remember is that this uses 4.5 volts because three 1.5 D type cells makes 4.5 when they're fresh and brand new anyway. Uh, and indeed on the lid here it says it says just that. 4.5 use 3d cells so what that means is then of course is that it's a little awkward isn't it getting 4.5 volts from anything i was thinking more in terms of um, phone charger power something like that oh hello i've appeared <laughs> um so yeah phone charger power which is 5 volts because i've got a million of those lying around so use one for this why not but five volts too much what could we do about that well let's think about that in a little while first of all let's have a look at the power then so if i switch this on now at 4.5 volts and switch it on and it says 100 well around nearly 200 milliamps isn't it not a huge amount now that's on a dim setting though because that's what i had it on last if i increase the brightness by pressing this so it's gone brighter. Now that's gone immediately to 300, well, nearly 400 actually. Press it again. 
Look at that. That is 500 milliamps. And in fact, the voltage now is dithering about all over the place because I suspect we've been limited by the current. So let's just um, up my current a little bit. There we are. Right, so 540 it can take, and it is actually taking 500 and, well, pretty much that actually. That's a lot, isn't it? That's a lot of current to take. The light is lovely and bright, especially at night. I mean, I've got it angled down the door an angle so I can see where to put the key in to lock it. And it does light up quite a bit of the patio at the same time. But at 540 odd milliamps, it's not surprising that those poor little D cells didn't last very long during the winter months chunky though they may be so i need a power supply then of 4.5 volts and something that can supply at least 500 in fact it's current limiting again let me um, up that a bit more let's bring it up to 600 and see what it says so i'm allowing it to say 551 okay well that's that's a tad more than what we had a minute ago so it is it is quite a bit of current Luckily, of course, just about every phone charger in the world can deliver 500 milliamps. I mean, they're probably one amp, one and a half, two amps, something like that. So what do we need to do to enable a phone charger to power this device without this all blowing up and zapping the LED? So any, any, any ideas out there? What can we do to reduce that voltage? Sorry, resistor? Mm, possibly. Anybody else? Yes, at the back there. A diode? Yes, indeed. So my first thought was in fact a shot key diode because that's got a fairly low forward voltage drop. Unfortunately, it didn't deliver the 4.5 volts. It went up to something like 4.8 which is too high, which means it would take too much current. So then I just put in a standard 1N4001 diode, of which I have many. In fact, I bought a whole pack from Banggood. Uh, it's this pack here. Let me just move the light out of the... Whoa, that's bright. This pack here I bought. Um, I'll put... If I can find where I, book, where I actually got it from, I'll put a link. But I know it was Banggood. Or it could have been AliExpress, I suppose. So this is the assortment. You get some Schottky diodes which are very low forward current dropping. Uh, 1 amp, 1 amp and 3 amp, but the higher voltage here. Switching diodes, fast recovery diodes and standard rectifier diodes, which is what I'm using now. Now, because we only need half an amp, or just over, uh, a 1N4001 is more than enough. And that should drop round about the half a volt, 0.7 really, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts uh, that we need without blowing it up. And this is where I got those diodes from. It was, in fact, AliExpress, uh, not Banggood. So that's that's fine. Um, £3.97, it says here. I actually paid something like 3 84 but that's probably explained by the exchange rate to the UK pound at the moment. So it's still pretty good value. I think four quid for all these. I mean, once you buy these, you've probably got enough for, well, in my case, the foreseeable future. So diode julia fixed how do i connect the charger the phone charger plug now to this and of course the eagle eyed amongst you and this doesn't count for the eagle eyed award of the week is that um, i've already soldered in the back here one of these nift nifty little usb connectors you can buy these by the dozen on the internet whether it's aliexpress banggood gearbest whatever and all it does is break out the usb into the well, the three, two data lines, the power supply and this ID one, which I've absolutely no idea what ID is. Perhaps that's, um, is that a newer version of the USB socket? Whatever, I'm not using it. I'm just using the two outside ones. And the, all I've got here is a couple of um, DuPont cables connected to this and they go down in here. One's connected at the bottom there, as you can see for negative. And the other one goes through a little gap here this is where the positive supply has got to be attached. So what I've done is got the diode here attached to the DuPont cable and then just soldered on the side there. Neat enough so that this still slots into its receptacle. And of course um, this, the socket itself will just be tucked in here, nicely insulated with a bit of foam. And, uh, well, Bob's your uncle, we hope. Oops. Oh well. 
Right, let's have a look um, how I'm going to fix this then in my workshop, given that the power is in my workshop, but I need the power outside now. So I've got to drill through from my workshop to outside, given that the actual wire and voltage going outside is only going to be 5 volts. No special precautions have to be taken for that, thank goodness. So it should be a fairly simple job, shouldn't it? So here we are in my workshop, looking towards the back door now. Well, the only door, actually, of my workshop, looking out. And um, luckily for me, there's this um, non-maintained emergency light up here, uh, connected into the wiring circuit to the consumer unit over here. Um, that's the lighting consumer unit wiring. So I can take an outlet from this device here up through that hole and um, hopefully to the outside. Um, that large hole will be covered with some kind of socket, you know, fuse socket or something, or where I'm going to plug in the actual phone charger unit. So outside my workshop, you can see that's where the receptacle, the Mr. Beam's socket is screwed on. And above it, you can just see a little hole up there where I've drilled through for the USB cable to come through because I don't want to rewire that, I might as well keep it as is if I possibly can, although having said that I might have to shorten the cable but that's easier than trying to solder on a USB plug uh, for this. So I've got to take this off, drill a hole in the back somewhere or maybe the side, wherever's easiest and just have it come, come through there into that receptacle that you saw for the main unit. And then hopefully that'll all be running off mains power and I'll never have to replace the batteries again. Yeah, sounds good, doesn't it? Right, quick update then. Another day. Um, my eyesight's getting better, thank goodness. As you can see, I'm wearing my normal Harry Potter specs now. So, uh, right, let's plug on with this. So this was already done. I haven't actually put the foam inside here yet to um, secure that USB thing. There it is down, floating down the bottom at the moment. But what we need to do now is drill the housing. I've taken this from the outside of the workshop and I've estimated, given that um, when this screws in, oh, well, the best place for the wire to come through, of course, is here at the back. So when this goes in here and is screwed up tight, so that padlock lines up, we can see that it's in line with that arrow, okay, where we want the wire to come through. And looking at it this way, I've estimated the best place to drill is where I put that white blob of, um, uh, what do you call it, correction fluid, typist correction fluid. No good for typists anymore because we don't do that sort of typing, do we? But uh, for this sort of marking, it's much more useful than, say, um, a felt tip pen or a permanent marker because you wouldn't be able to see it on this. So it's always useful to have a tube of that in your, in your kit, basically. Right, so I'm going to drill that, poke it all through, connect it up, put it back outside... All that's uh, fine and well, no problems with that. Now, do you remember I said that um, it didn't matter which uh, phone charger I was going to use because they can all do the business? Hmm, interesting I said that because it's not true. This is the one I'm eventually going to use. Uh, this has got a 1,000 milliamps plus or minus 500, uh, 50, which is more than adequate for our needs, and it fits, and it's it looks nice. It's only a single output anyway. It's not like I'm wasting an output. So great. great, that's the one I'll use. I did look at this one briefly, because it's it looks pretty similar, doesn't it? You know, not a million miles apart, except if you look at the, um, the output from this one, output 5 volts, 250 milliamps. The cheapskates, I'll tell you, 250. I don't know what appliance this actual item came with, because obviously it must have come with something. But 250 milliamps, I mean, lucky I didn't choose that blindly, because that would have um, been severely overloaded, and we all know what happens when these things overload. Mm. You don't? Look at that video on screen. It's a good one to, uh, to look at when these things overheat. Anyway, so that I'll be using for something in my workshop that only requires about 20 milliamps. That's fine. But it's always useful to know, isn't it? Right, so here I am then trying to get this plug into a hole there. I've pre-drilled it with a 2 mil um, pilot just so I've got somewhere to start with. Now I'm going to drill it with this um, reamer, as it's called, uh, this one here, and uh, keep reaming out until the plug drops through. Obviously the smaller the better, but we shall see. No, too small. Needs to be a bit more. Step by step. Mm, no, a bit more. 
Oh, that's that's too tight. Just not quite getting through there. Surely that's got to be it now. Right. Well, it is for this plug, which was the most similar one I could find to the one outside. So I'm going to nip outside quick and just make sure that fits through too. I don't want to get out there and find it's actually a little bit too small. Right. Let's do that. Just as well I checked actually because it is still too small. The plug outside is a bit more like this I think and as you can see that that is not going to fit through there so let's drill that out a bit more. Tight but that would fit so let's see if I can do that on out, the outside one as well. Yes that's uh, a good fit actually that that's nice now. Um, obviously I'm going to have to seal this once the cable's in there because uh, I did insist on putting the plug through it rather than the cable. Well, that's okay, we all we'll sort that out. Luckily it's in a very sheltered place, so it's not rain that I'm particularly worried about. It's just damp, you know, the ingress of damp, moist air over many, many months. That's, that's enough to, um, well, cause it some kind of corrosion. So, okay, that's it then. I think I'm going to put all this together now, fit it up and, um, well, see if it works. So this is what it looks like in my workshop now. I've got the double socket here. I'm going to label this, say lighting circuit only. I mean, I know it is, but it's always worthwhile putting the label up there to remind me. That's the USB um, cable. It's a short one. So I've drilled it through. It goes behind the socket and out. I'll show you that in a sec. So that's waiting to be plugged into the, the charger. That's wired into this at the back. There's a simple terminal block in there. So it just went through the wood back up and out here. All pretty easy. Um, if you don't know how to wire mains up, please don't do it because it's not a thing to experiment with. And I've got to say that because I don't want people getting electrocuted while watching this video. Right, next stop now is to show you the finished product outside. Right, I'm going to see if I can sneak around the corner so you can actually see it come on because it's so sensitive. There we are. <laughs> Right, and that's where we're going to leave it uh, this week, outside my workshop with the Mr. Beam's light very bright up there, as you can see, and uh, working well from the, the mains now, so I'll never have to buy any more batteries. Great, hope you enjoyed this slightly different project. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose, and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.